everybody, I'm Eve from the channel Eve Bennett. You might have seen me on here before when I filmed a video eight about revision tips and today I'm going to be doing a slightly different video because it is currently A level option season. Um, the people at my school, I'm pretty sure, are handing in their options this week and they've just had their sixth form for a day to go and see what the lessons are like. Um, so this is going to be a really, really good time for me to talk to you guys because obviously you're all doing your GCSEs about which A levels to pick and how to pick them. So for reference, I take English literature, German, Spanish and politics. I couldn't remember what my last option was then. But I'm currently in the middle of my mock week and oh gosh. Oh gosh, the first advice I have for you is that A-levels are such a big step up from GCSE just in the fact that when you're in an exam you can't go in knowing that you know everything because there is simply too much to know and you need to make sure that you are willing to give up so much of your time to this subject. Like, so My number one piece of advice would be when you're picking your A-levels always, always, always sit there for a long period of time, don't just write them down quickly and think, am I willing to give up a lot of my time? Am I willing to sit and do hours and hours and hours of revision with these subjects and am I interested in them? I took my subjects because I personally was interested in them. I didn't take ones that I thought I would do the best in. If I'd have done that, I would have taken history and science, basically. History... History, maths, English, lit and science are the ones that I did the best in in my exams. Obviously I took English lit but you see what I mean. You need to pick ones that you're willing to devote time to because literally it doesn't matter what you got in GCSE. If you got an A star in biology but you hate it and you got an A in maths and you love it, like pick the one that you prefer. Obviously if you get like a D in German and you love it and you get an A star in history, and you don't like it as much but you still like it obviously you're gonna weigh up the grades versus the like but it should be 60% maybe even 70% do I like this subject and then 30% what grade did I get in that subject I took I didn't do badly in any of the four that I took politics I didn't have a grade for but I took it from history um, so history was the GCSE that I did the best in so I took politics because I love history but I didn't like the course and that links on to my second point. So my second point is you need to read up on the course that you'll be doing, the exam board that you'll be studying, um, like what the course content is, how the exam is formatted, is it loads of coursework, is it all exam. You need to look at that and you need to see whether you're going to be interested in the course specifically because I love history. History was probably one of my favourite subjects at GCSE but I didn't take it because I hated the course. I love the Thatcher era um, but then it was Russia and Russia was the one bit of history at GCC that I hated um, so I didn't take it for that reason and I don't regret not taking it at all because I took politics instead and I love politics it's so interesting make sure you read the entire syllabus you look at past exam papers you just get a feel for what the subject's going to be like because if you don't get a feel for what the subject's going to be like you're going to have a really really nasty shock when you go into sixth form and you hate the lessons I, for English, I was so reluctant to take it, not because I hate English, but because I have never had the best relationship with English, but I took it because I like it, and honestly, English lessons are probably my favourites, even though I struggle with it the most, they're my favourite lessons, so it's all swings and roundabouts, but I made sure I read, I like read upon the texts that we would be studying to make sure that I liked them, so we studied The Tempest, Gatsby, Streetcar and Chaucer um, so if it had perhaps been like Romeo and Juliet um, um, Pride and Prejudice uh, texts like that that I hate I wouldn't have taken it because it doesn't matter how good you are at the subject if you don't like the topics there's no point in doing it. Third tip which kind of links on from my last one make sure you get a feel for what the lessons are like. At our school now this year they did a thing where the year 11s came in and sat in on a lesson so they could see what the style of learning was like, what the sort of topics were like. Um, obviously not every school does that but if you ask your if you ask the teachers I'm sure they will let you because that is the only way to see for yourself if you like the subject and if you can't sit on a lesson talk to a year 12 or a year 13 that has done the subject and at your school nowhere else and ask them 
what do you think of the lessons honestly you know what sort of format are the lessons in are they very discussion based are they very work by yourself based are they powerpoint based are they more worksheet based like you need to know what the teachers are like for those subjects because i have two politics teachers who teach very differently um and i find one a lot easier to learn from than the other because i receive information a lot better actually interacting with it rather than just having someone tell me tell me information so you need to make sure that the teachers and the lesson style is going to work for you as well because you've decided that you like the subject you've decided that you're interested in the spec and you need to make sure that as well whatever syllabus you are going to be studying you learn well because there is no point in going and having a syllabus that you love but can't learn anything from because you don't like not that you don't like the teacher but you just don't learn well from powerpoints or you don't learn well from worksheets or you don't learn well from discussion whatever floats your boat you have to keep that into account too my fourth point would definitely be if you are sitting with your parents perhaps um looking over your a-level options please 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 don't take a-levels just to go into a career path now me saying this is not saying if you want to be a doctor don't take biology and chemistry what i'm saying is you don't need to limit yourself unnecessarily so I have so many friends that took biology and chemistry, English history, or biology, chemistry, um, psychology, geography, or English, maths, physics, and history. Like people at our school tend to keep their options quite open. I know for a fact that I'm never, ever, ever want, gonna want to go into science. It's a fact, there's nothing, like I just don't, I'm not interested in science. So I could rule those out straight away. But I don't know if I want to go into politics or just languages or whether I want to go into English. Like, I don't know. I'm leaning towards politics, but I've got the option to go in down the politics route, down the translation route, down the lecturer route, teacher route. Whatever I want to do, I've got the option. Keep your options wide open. Not saying take biology, art like four totally subjects that just don't link at all take ones that reflect your interests and if your interests are science and maths for all, by all means just take science and maths but if you're interested in science and you're also interested in history and english like my friend is she took both because that helped her with both and now she's got the option to go and become a doctor or she's got the option to go and do history and English um, and she's got her option open because when she picked her option she didn't know what she wanted to do so now she can explore two routes in more depth and rule one out at the end of the day when she goes to uni and my fifth tip is don't let your parents influence your A-level options please just take the options that you want if you want to take three A-levels, great if you want to take four, great if you want to take five, great though I wouldn't recommend it unless you're doing further maths just take what you want. I did not listen to my parents. I did not listen to my teachers. I well, you obviously listen to my teachers. Like if they'd have said to me, Eve, you can't take that for A level, then you know. But when I had my options meeting, I was pretty set on taking chemistry, um, chemistry, politics, German and Spanish. I think with history as my backup for chemistry, and my teacher said have you ever thought that chemistry probably doesn't really fit very well with those options do you ever want to go into chemistry and I was like no I just like chemistry as a subject and she was like have you ever thought that history might maybe fit a bit better and at the time I didn't listen and then I went away and considered it and I actually realized that chemistry wasn't what I wanted to do because I'd only put it down because I felt the need to have a science subject because I kind of felt pressured but at the end of the day I ended up picking English because even though my mum told me that I shouldn't take it, everyone at school told me I shouldn't take it because all I ever do is cry about it. I took it because I enjoy it and, you know, I enjoy the lessons now, so I don't regret it. So basically my message is, don't let yourself be pressured and pick what you want to take because if you don't pick what you want to take, ultimately, it's futile because you're gonna hate it. I know so many people that took things because they felt pressured to and hate the guts of them. The amount of people that have taken maths because they felt like they should take maths and hate it it's ridiculous of course there are people that love maths don't get me wrong but like there's so many people that hate it like i didn't take maths even though it was probably my strongest ever subject and i found it easy because i hated it and although i found english so much more challenging even though now i won't lie i still have breakdowns about it on the weekly and have an english mock exam today and it went so badly 
but that's beside the point. What I'm trying to say is, just do you. These A-levels are going to be your life for the next two years. If you don't pick subjects you like, no. You're not going to cope. You're just not going to cope. <laughs> so I hope that this was of some use to you. If you have any questions, comment them down below and I'll try and reply. Um, hope all your mocks went really well. And I wish you best of luck for your GCSEs. And come and watch Primrose's video on my channel if you want to. You don't have to. But I reckon you should because it's going to be a pretty darn good video. And I'll see you soon. Bye guys. Mwah.